How would you fix what's going on with the Vancouver Canucks if you had the keys to the kingdom? Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, it's safe to say you're on board with those that think you have to knock this thing right down and yeah. start to build it back up. Just give me a thought or two or three. I mean, we could go all day on the topic, I know. But, you know, a couple of key areas that you would address if Ben Kuzma, if you had yeah. the corner office there, you know, you had the big leather chair and the big desk, uh, if you were calling the shots, how would you get this thing moving back in the right direction? Well, as much as we talk about uh, where's your future first line and who's going to play with the Sedins on a given year, um, you really have to address trying to get a top four D-man here. I, I think the back end uh, is of paramount importance, especially if Dan Hamius is, is not part of the equation moving forward. Uh, let's be honest. I mean, they, they got they got a gift from heaven in, in Ben Hutton. For a kid to come in and be able to play that well that soon, uh, that's a given. Uh, Andrew Padon will probably be in your third pairing next year. Uh, you know, you signed Alex Biega for two years. I don't know what you're going to do with Bartkowski. Weber's not going to be back. You've got to set your sights in that regard. I think, uh, you know, they always say that uh, good offense comes from good defense. I think you've got to start there. But my bigger question, Jeff, is, you know, with the Sedins and two years left, and they're still productive players, although you can just see you don't have to be a, a, a doctor that Henrik's right. trying to play through his shoulder and his back and his hip. Watch him in the face-off circle. He looks extremely uncomfortable. So what is your first line? Who is your first line moving forward? Do the Sedins slide into a second line position next year? And then who's your first line? That's always been a problem here. I just wonder what ownership's thinking again. Do they think that the Sedins are going to be productive again and then they're going to identify mm, Louis Erickson in Boston, a 30-year-old Swede who's played with the Twins before. Maybe they can get him in free agency and, and try to ride this thing out again in terms of trying to get to the playoffs. I really hope they don't do that. I really hope that they understand that, listen, this is where we're at. Andre Padan, Hunter Shinkarik, Brendan Gauntz, uh, Alex Grenier, whoever. You've got to sell the message that this was coming, folks. It's here. Ride along with us. You could market it. And people will be patient. All the people I talk to, Jeff, if you play the kids and you have the patience, they know how much better they're going to be in a year or two. They know where you're going to be with the status quo. Uh, should they blow it up? I mean, they want to be competitive. But I don't think you can be competitive and, and, and rebuild at the same time. You're going to have to take your lumps. But people, trust me, ownership, people will embrace that. You you can put on an entertaining product with youth, but people will wrap their hands around a project where there's some future, not one that you're heading for a brick wall. 